So we're nearly finished with our log viewer application. But just before we complete it, there's one or two small things that we should really tidy up. You'll notice that when the application starts up, we still have this temp message appearing at the bottom of the user interface in the border layout south position. So we'll need to just clear the text of that J label at the beginning when the application starts up. Another thing that we'd like to add is when we type in the name of a file, let's say failures.txt, a natural thing to want to do when you type that in is to hit enter so you can load the contents of that file. At the moment we have to click on the load button in order to load up our JList with all the contents of that file. So we'll need to add some code to trap the enter key being pressed on the text area so that we can bypass having to click on the load button. Of course the user can still click on the load button as well but it, we, it would be nice to have both options. And the last thing that we will fix is that when the user resizes the window to a smaller size than the amount of items that are in the list box you'll see that a lot of the data is obscured. There's no scroll bar appearing on the list which would, nor which would be normal behavior. So we'll see how we can make this list box scrollable and it's very easy to do. So three little things to tidy up and in order to do that we'll have to change the code around a little bit. So let's quit the application and start to change our code. First thing is easy. Let's have the message label at the bottom of the screen display a blank message to begin with. And in order to do that, when we create the label, the message label, all we have to do is just have a blank string. So that did say temp message or something like that. So rather than have something in there, we'll just give that label a blank string to begin with. The next thing we want to do is to allow our list to be scrollable. And we'll do this when we add the list to our border layout. So when we add the list to the border layout, we're adding it in the center position. And we're just adding the list called log list. So to fix this and to turn this log list into a scrollable list, we'll use something called a J scroll pane. So basically we'll embed the log list in a J scroll pane and then add the scroll pane to the border layout.center. Again, this is very similar to the J panel that we added in the north and then added the components to the J panel. In this case, we'll be using a J scroll pane, adding the list to the J scroll pane and then adding the J scroll pane to the center position of our border layout. So all we have to do is when we add the list to the border layout.center, we'll just say c.add new J scroll pane and we'll add the log list to the scroll pane, the new scroll pane. So we're wrapping the log list up in a new J scroll pane and then adding that J scroll pane to border layout.center. And it's as easy as that. So let's just save that and test it out. Okay, so let's load a file, login underscore failures dot text. Load that up. And if we resize the window, let's see what happens. Okay, once the window gets smaller than the J list items, we see a scroll bar appear and we can scroll the list. 
and if the window gets smaller this way we'll also see a horizontal scroll bar. So all we have to do is just embed the item that we want scrollable in a J scroll pane and then add that to our user interface. So our list is now scrollable. Okay, let's work on adding the action listeners so that we can hit enter on the J text area to load our file. So if we go to our class definition, we'll see that we implement action listener. So action listener is the listener we need for trapping events like button clicks. But what about if the user actually types a key on the keyboard? Well, it turns out we can implement action listener and we're not limited to implementing one type of interface. We can actually implement action listener and also implement something called a key listener. And just like when we implement action listener, we're forced to add an action performed method to our class. When we implement a key listener, we're also forced to add some key listening methods to our class. So if we save and compile our program now, we should get some error messages. So it's the compiler is telling us that we don't override the key pressed or key released method in our program. So there are a number of methods that we're going to have to add into our program for this key listener to work. Okay, so we're going to go down to where we have our action performed defined and just be just above the action performed I'm going to add in public void key released and that takes instead of an action event it takes a key event now as it turns out I don't want to actually do anything when a key is released so I'm just gonna leave this method blank and I'm gonna say ignore key release so I don't want to do anything when a key is released okay another method that I'm gonna to have to provide an implementation for because I'm implementing the key listener is key typed so I'll say public void key typed and again it takes a key event e and this time I I don't want to provide an implementation for key typed so again I'll just kind of create an empty method which does nothing I'll we'll just say ignore key typed now I do want to do something when a key is pressed so the next one that I'll define is public void key pressed and again it takes a key event E and I will provide some code for this method now I want to check to see if the enter key is pressed I don't want to do anything if any other keys are pressed I only want the file to load if the enter key is pressed so in order to do that just like the action command I can say if e dot get key code so the key code is going to return the code of the key that was pressed and I can check that against key event dot vk underscore enter so in the key event class it's got all of these key codes defined and I can just get the key code that was pressed from the key event and I can check it against key event dot vk underscore enter so if the enter key is pressed what do I want to do well I want to load the file 
in from whatever the user typed into the text box and I have that code already done it's basically just the same functionality as if the user clicked on the load button so then in my action performed where I check to see if the load button is pressed all I need to do is copy that code out of there and put the same code into my key event for the enter key so when the user presses enter I'll remove all the elements from the list and then I'll try and load the file that's defined by the contents of the text field so all I did to, to achieve that was implement the key listener as well as an action listener and then I needed to provide an implementation for a key released, key typed and key pressed and there's one more thing that I need to do just like the way I add an add action listener for my button load so the button load knows where to send its events and also the button remove knows where to send its events I also need to tell the text field where to send its events so in order to do that I'll just say txt file name dot add a key listener this time not an action listener and again it's going to send its key events to this class and this being a self reference to this class so I'll say txt file name dot add key listener when the user presses any keys on that text field they should be handled by this class and these are the methods that will handle them I'm only interested in a key pressed event and also I'm only interested when the user presses the enter key so hopefully when we compile this our error should disappear oops no we still have some errors in here uh, so it's saying abstract method and it's saying it doesn't have the key released okay public void key released looks like we have it there so the error that we made here is the key released, key typed and key pressed all start with a lowercase k so I need to make sure that I get the names of those methods correct and if we save and compile now so here is our application we have a blank message at the bottom of, screen, of the screen to begin with we can type in our file name here login failures dot text and instead of pressing load we can simply hit enter on the text field and it will load in the items from the file give us our nice message 16 items added to the list resize the window we get our scroll bars and horizontal scroll bar as well we can click on an item in the list and remove it from the list now it's not removing it from the file it's only removing it from the list but we could very easily add some code to basically go through the list and rewrite a refreshed list out to file if we wanted to but for the moment that's all the functionality that we need to add to our log viewer application and that's it for this video